Father, you gave us a Savior. He's your Son, Jesus Christ. And he came to shine light, light that would reveal who you are, who we are, and who he is, and what his role is to reconcile sinful man to a holy God. I pray for us today, Lord, as we spend time remembering your Son. I pray that you would help us to do it well. I pray that you would give us eyes to see your purpose for your Son. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. As we come to our time around the Lord's table today, we are going to be looking at the very thing that we just sung about. We're going to be looking at Jesus Christ and how it is that he shines light into darkness. So if you have a Bible with you, would you turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 8 through 11 today. And if you don't have a Bible, there are some men that are going to be coming down the aisles. Simply raise your hand and they will get a copy of God's word to you. If you don't actually own a Bible, we encourage you to keep this for yourself so that you can begin reading God's Word on a regular basis on your own. The setting here is Paul is writing to his beloved son in Christ, Timothy. Timothy is pastoring the church in Ephesus, and that is a very difficult task. Uh, There are challenges on all sides for Timothy, and Paul is writing to provide Timothy with encouragement, and that encouragement is found in God's purpose and in Jesus Christ and how he lives out that purpose. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading verses 8 through 11, and as we get to verse 9, just look at God and his choice and his purpose, then we'll focus on verse 10 and we'll see what Jesus actually did to bring about that purpose. So let's read verses 8 through 11 together. Paul writes to Timothy, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me as prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. But now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. We see the purpose of God in verse 9. God saved us, called us with a holy calling, according to his own purpose. God saved. Man was in a condition, man was in a position in which he needed to be saved. He needed to be saved from God's judgment and God's wrath against man for the offense that man's sin is against him. So God did what man couldn't do. He had a purpose. He had a purpose in mind, and we see that. It was a purpose in which God determined that he would set man apart for himself with a holy calling, a calling which sets a person apart for a relationship with God, sets them apart for a holiness and a life that is different than than they otherwise would live. And you see the purpose of God in this? He did this according to his own purpose and his grace. God knew that there was nothing that man could do that would please him. Every attempt that man would make to satisfy the terms of God's righteousness would do only one thing, and that is it would offend God. It would offend God. So God did something else. He apportioned grace to that person. He determined that what he would do was he would declare a righteousness on that person because of a faith that he would give them in Jesus Christ. So how kind of God is it to save and call with a holy calling for the purpose of setting a person apart for a relationship with him? If you read verses 9 and 10 together, you see that God's purpose has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we see the three things that Jesus did here. Following that, Jesus did three things, and he abolished death, and he brought to light two different things. One was life, and one was immortality in the gospel. But the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ is something we need to understand here. This is a reference to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we see that by the nature of the things that follow immediately after that. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ that actually abolished death. Jesus submitted himself to death on the cross, and then when he was raised from the dead, 
by the collaborative effort of the triune Godhead, Jesus actually declared victory over death and the sin that was part of that death that came about because of that death. So Jesus actually was the one who actually was the one in his resurrection that was accomplishing these things. And so when he abolished death, what he did was he terminated the process or the condition in which after a person dies, their body and their soul are separated. They're, they're separated from one another. And he brought about a condition for those who put their faith and their trust in him in which upon their resurrection from the dead, their body and their soul will be reunited. And be reunited for some very special purposes that we see in the life and the immortality that Paul is writing to Timothy about. The life there talks about a life that is wholly devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Christ from the dead is what enables the believer to walk in newness of life, a life that would allow them to serve with wholehearted devotion to the Lord in a way that they never could before. And Paul is speaking in reference to eternity here when he talks about the fact that um, this is something which is um, immortal. It is something that the believer will be able to do forever. They will be able to spend eternity serving the Lord with a wholehearted devotion that they could never have before. So this is Paul's encouragement to Timothy. It's his encouragement to us today for the believer. God had a perfect purpose for the believer. He called the believer. He saved the believer with a purpose. And that purpose was so that he could draw them into a relationship with himself and as Christ Jesus would enable them through his resurrection to serve him with a wholehearted devotion uh, forever. That's encouraging. So for the believer today, we want to sit down and remember the things that Christ has done for us. We want to remember that he has called us with a holy calling. God has called us. And because of that calling, we are able to enter into a relationship with God where we can serve him in a way that is appropriate and right. He did all of that through the gospel, as we see at the end of verse 10. All this did not come for free. It came through the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ on a cross. Everything that a believer is able to do in their new life, everything that they're able to do is because Jesus actually went to a cross and he took upon himself the sin of everybody who had placed their trust in him. And he bore that sin. And then he suffered God's right judgment against that. And it lasted for six hours as he hung on a cross and he actually satisfied God's judgment. He fulfilled all of the terms of righteousness so that every person in this room who's placed their trust in Christ can be redeemed and is redeemed into a relationship with God. So when the elements come to you, take them and hold them and consider the work that Jesus did on a cross in your place so that you could be a person who is purchased by Christ into a new relationship with God and you can serve him. And when you've done that and you've spent time to prepare your heart, take the elements on your own when you're ready. If you're here today and you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, you need to understand that these are some of the most beautiful words in all of scripture for the believer. They speak of the assurance that a believer has in eternity. They speak of the confidence that a believer can have as they live their life out today. This is something that is for believers only. They look forward to a time when they will spend forever doing the thing that is more satisfying and more fulfilling than anything that is here on this earth, any experience we could ever have. You need to understand that in order to have that experience, you must embrace Christ as your savior and your Lord be here after the service, ready, able, and willing to talk to you about that. Um, but this is a time for believers to remember what Christ has done for them. So when the elements come to you, just take them and pass them to the person next to you. But can use this time to consider these words, that it's Christ and only Christ who reconciles you to a holy God. After everybody's had a chance to serve themselves, I'll come and close our time in prayer. Men, come and serve us.